say hello to Erica Nicole Clark. Mm. Hello. Um, all right, so I'm going to preface this story with telling you guys a little bit about myself. Um, did you guys grow up in the 80s, predominantly amount of you? Yes. So I have a famous... <laughs> or the 70s. Um, I have a famous father. Uh, my father is Mr. T. Okay, yeah. Um, now, most people think I'm lying when I say that, but I'm like, why would I pick him? Um, that's, that's so fucking random. Um, so... <laughs> But this is not a story about him and includes him, but it is about my mother. Um, so my mom and dad met in junior high and my mom has seven sisters. Actually, she has 10 if you count her stepsisters. And out of her seven sisters, all of them have masters and PhDs. They're all extremely intelligent. They all have degrees in mathematics or science. My mother is the only one who did not go to college. She got pregnant with my sister, and then she had me eight years later. So to make up for her fucking in high school, uh, me and my sister, <laughs> me and my sister were, we had to be her protégés. We were forced to be extremely intelligent. My sister is extremely intelligent when it comes to science, and I excel in math. Every day of my life after school, I had to take a math class. It was always like a math word mixed with an athletic word. It was like mathnasium, math Olympics, you know, like <laughs> every single day of my life. Um, so then, so we, we lived on the south side of Chicago. We lived on 82nd and Racine. Yeah. Um, then the A team took off and we got the fuck out of the south side, right? And. <laughs> <laughs> And we moved to this suburb called Lake Forest, right? Yeah. Um, so if you're familiar with Lake Forest, you know that I was the only black child at my elementary school, right? And my sister was the only black person in the high school, right? So they brought me to school before school started and the principal wanted to talk to me. And my mom told the principal that I was excellent at math. So he placed me in an advanced math class based off what my mother had said, right? So, and mind you, I've always been good at math up until that point. So they put me in a math class uh, with a teacher, it's advanced math. So I was in fourth grade, so it wasn't really advanced math so much as it was fifth or sixth grade math, right? My teacher was named Miss Valentine, okay? So the first day I'm in math with Miss Valentine, it's great, it's fine. Second day, which was a Wednesday or Thursday, yeah, it was a Thursday, it's fine, right? After class, Miss Valentine gave me a letter and she said, I want to give this to your, I want you to give this to your mother. I tried to call, but she didn't answer, so I want you to give this letter to your mom. And then come Monday of next week, you'll be in a new math class, right? So <laughs> I went home. And I gave the letter to my mom, and my mom opened it. <laughs> I remember my mom was sitting there smoking a cigarette, and she's reading it, and she's like, oh, I'm going to fuck that bitch up tomorrow, right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, right? Um, I don't know about y'all, but when a black mom from the South Side says that, she means that, right? So... <laughs> So I couldn't sleep, like my stomach was like turning and I'm like, oh please, please mom, like we just moved to Lake Forest, like please don't do this, right? So in the morning, my sister drove me to school and my mom was asleep, so I was just like, oh, she probably forgot about it. Whatever that letter said, she forgot about it. Um, so I get to school, I'm in a homeroom <laughs> and our homeroom teacher is taking attendance and my mom came into the classroom with black sunglasses on, black leather coat, black driving gloves, and was like, where the fuck is Miss Valentine, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like in a fourth grade classroom, right? Um, so I started like doing my work because I was like, I don't know that lady at all, right? Um, so, so my homeroom teacher is like, ma'am, can I help you? How did you get in the school? Like, who are you, right? So my mom was like, fuck you, I'll find her myself, right? So my mom is going down the hallways, and as we all know, in elementary school classrooms, like the teacher's names are on the door, right? 
So she goes to Miss Valentine's classroom. Like, our whole class is standing and looking at her in the hallway. And she goes, Miss Valentine, can I talk to you for a second? Miss Valentine comes out. And I remember hearing Miss Valentine say, I don't care who you're married to. I'm not going to be intimidated by you. And my mom started choking Miss Valentine, right? <laughs> and she's slamming her against the lockers. Um, and mind you, at that time, my mom had to be like 34. Miss Valentine was like 61, okay? Like, <laughs> this was not fair, right? Um, <laughs> So my mom's choking her and all the kids are screaming and I'm just like, well, it was nice. Lake Forest was nice while it lasted, right? Um, and my mom is just going nuts and she's so mad and then the principal comes, the police come, they take her. And like, you know, so I'm just like standing there like dumbfounded, like I don't know what happened, right? So that was a Thursday, okay. So that Friday is fine. Monday of the next week, Miss Valentine slipped, hit her head, had an aneurysm and died. <laughs> I went home and I told my mom, mama, Miss Valentine died. And my mom was like, fuck Miss Valentine. I'm glad the bitch is dead, right? And I was like, oh my God, right? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you, okay? Are you a murderer? Um, so, so that's fourth grade. So every time, <laughs> right. Every time I brought up Ms. Valentine to my mom, my mom would never tell me what the letter said. She would never say anything. Fine. So junior year of high school, my mom had a manic episode and went to a psychiatric hospital, Highland Park Hospital. Um, surprise. Um, so, uh, <laughs> and it was the first time, like, my parents used to go out of town a lot when I was a kid, like an illegal amount of time out of town, uh, like three weeks, you know? But, like, it was the first time that... Like, I knew my mom was going to be gone for this amount of time. So I was just looking through her stuff to kind of see, like, what made her snap, right? And I found the letter from Miss Valentine. Uh, my mother had had it laminated. Uh, that is how fucking crazy she was, right? She went to Staples and had this letter laminated, right? So I'm like, oh, my God, I, even, I haven't thought about this in years, and I want to see what this says because my mom never told me. So I used to have the letter. My sister has it now. I used to know it verbatim, but this is tick, like particularly what it said, right? Uh, so I opened the letter. It said, Dear Mrs. T, which is strike one, okay? <laughs> that is, my mom's name is not fucking Miss T. Like, she knows that. Um, she knows my mom's name was Phyllis Clark. Uh, Mr. T is a fake name. Like, she's well aware of that. So... <laughs> Dear Mrs. T, strike one. Um, it said, I want to welcome you and your family to Lake Forest. Erica is a joy to have in class. Right? So I'm like, okay, what's the problem? The next sentence said, I am recommending that she be moved out of my class into remedial math because I think that she's cheating. <laughs> because there's no way that a kid from an inner city school could be at the same level as the students at Lake Forest. And I think it's unfair that you raise your kids to not be at our level so they just cheat their way to success, right? <laughs> yeah. And she said a lot, a lot of things. And I, I remember reading that letter, right? And I remember thinking that. I was 15 years old when I was a junior. I remember thinking, like, I remember thinking that she didn't just think I was cheating. Like, she thought my whole family was cheating. Like, we didn't work hard enough to be in Lake Forest. Like, you know, my dad had pretty much just won the lottery or something like that. Like, she didn't think of, like, she didn't think that I was truly intelligent. She just thought that the administration had done something to, like, let me slide by because they were impressed about who my dad was, right? And I thought about, like, my whole life I had spent being embarrassed of my parents, right? Like, I was always embarrassed. Like, why can't they just be normal? Like, my dad showed up to my eighth grade graduation with a, a fucking sailor coat on, no shirt on underneath, <laughs> pink spandex and cowboy boots. Like, what the fuck are you, where are you going, right? <laughs> are you in the Navy or are you, I don't know what the fuck, right? So... My whole life, I was always extremely embarrassed by my parents, right? But like reading that, it made me realize that like a lot of people, even my next door neighbor had wrote something in the Sun Times, which my dad kept in our foyer of our house and I never understood, where she said something like, you can take the nigger out the projects, but you can't take the projects out of a nigger. And, and I, I thought about all that stuff and I thought about all those math classes I took every single day. And I thought to myself, man, 
Fuck Miss Valentine. I'm glad that bitch is dead. All right, thank you guys. Welcome to Lake Forest, Illinois. It's such a joy, she said, to have Erica in class with me. I really must say how much I enjoy her company. But, dear Mrs. T, even though I understand your husband's on TV, call it intuition, a condition is arousing my suspicion as a trained arithmetician. Well, it's does not compute She's guessing She's probably guessing Maybe she's cheating Cheating Fuck Mrs. Valentine Fuck, fuck Mrs. Valentine I understand you didn't make it all the way to college like me But really it is simply public knowledge you see A child from the south side, the outside Is automatically unqualified She can't hang, it's the order of the universe It's yin yang and so although the way she comes at every problem needs to make it easier to solve them, I live no in choice. Remedial, in remedial, in remedial math. She's guessing. She's probably guessing. No, maybe she's 